Let's drum and talk about it. <laughs> Show and tell, fourth grade. All right, I'm warming up here. This isn't going to be anything great in the beginning. I'm just warming up. Okay, so now I wanted to share a little warm-up trick or a thing that you can do and or a thing you can do when you're fucking up. When you're, you know, when you're crushing a diddle or something. Uh, you can flip the sticks around. You can flip the sticks around. And what's up with that? Where exactly is the camera? Okay, right there above the receiver. Okay. Why? Why is that a benefit? What What does that do? It causes you to manhandle the sticks more so than when you're doing it right set up so because there's a natural bounce here watch how fast the stick move goes up pretty lightning fast right all on its own i'm not doing anything i'm just letting it i'm just the conduit to let it bounce to let it pivot like that see how fast it goes up now watch the, now watch the back That's also lightning fast, but it's slower. <laughs> you can take my word for it. And I don't even have to, you know, put a put a camera on a clock on it. I just know it because of the way it feels. It feels slower. And it really and it forces me to pull out my diddles pull out the diddles like if I was drumming on just my legs or like a pillow or something right pillow drumming why is pillow drumming a thing because it forces you to really use the wrist and really finger things out and really develop this facility so I'm doing all of that. Everything is stroked. When I have a non-bouncy surface, unlike this, when I have a... Okay. <laughs> let's get teacher aid or aid. Let's, let's bust out some teacher aids. Okay. Visual aids. Watch the stick bounce. Boing. Boing. All on its own. Not doing anything here. Boing, boing, watch my leg, do, do, totally dead. Boingy, not boingy. So on the not boingy surfaces, in order to get out diddles, you know, things that you're gonna do relatively quickly over here. Like if I expect to do that over there, And, and this is purely bouncing. Those are all bounces. I'm not sticking any of that. It's fast enough. Maybe just a subtle, like, 7% sticking, but negligible. Now, coming up to... <laughs> not as fast, but... 
Now I have to do all that. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I have to do all of it. I don't get to rely on the bounce. And so when you start, when you take away the bounce element, then you're really going back to basics. And that's what you always want to do. You want to roll it back to basics. And so drumming on pillows. Okay, now I'm thinking about, I'm not thinking about minutia. And er, 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 I'm not thinking about complicated stuff. I'm just thinking, if I'm just, if I'm doing pillow drumming, if I'm doing non-boingy drumming, I'm, I'm not doing anything fancy. So therefore I have plenty of time and mental space to focus on breathing, posture, uh, form, you know, relax, dropping the shoulder, everything, relaxing the face, breathing, more breathing, don't not breathe. There can never be enough of breathing. There can never be enough breathing. There can always be room for For not holding your breath. <laughs> so there, so because the basic motions are this, you know, shoulder, elbow, wrist, fingers, shoulder, elbow, wrist, fingers. Usually never the shoulder, you know, unless you're really going for it. So we have those breakdowns and, and also we have the breakdown of the single stroke and the double stroke that's bounced or sticked one, two, 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 versus bounce, 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 one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Right, two different techniques for the same thing, which when you really get down to it, it's not the same thing because it sounds different, especially since the stick is ringing differently. The sound of every sound you hear, as far as what I'm doing here, the sound you're hearing is the sound of the pad being hit by the stick and also the sound of the stick being hit by the pad. It's called contact sound. It's a big lingo thing in the, in the classically trained percussion world contact sound what something sounds like what what something the sound of something when it's hit with the stick or that stick like the contact sound we have a, a wooden tip and we have a rubber tip and so very different contact sounds Well, I mean, forget the forget the ring of the pitch. That's kind of th that'll throw you off a little bit. But let me let me deaden the stick. Oh, the other stick is ringing. God, I was like, what the heck? Oh, it's still ringing. I was making that ring. There we go. Consistently. And, and, and even, just, and okay, well, more obviously, because this is rubber too, so that's diluting the sound. So this hard window. The window is, is the constant. The window is being hit. The drum pad is being hit. The triangle is being hit. The, that drum is being that con that massive concert bass drum is being hit with a timbali stick or an oversized tam tam mallet gong mallet like something that's too big for even that too heavy gong mallets are really heavy bass drum mallets not so heavy but heavy enough. It's gotta be proportionate. Right? Xylophone mallets, hard acrylic sphered mallets 
on a birch a birch mallet that sound is those mallets are perfect for a xylophone and for bells but what if all of a sudden the, my drum is the size of a whole trampoline and is stretched really hard and tight that's not going to be the greatest mallet for getting the most handsome sound out of that huge ass drum. So this is why we have choices of, of mallets, even choices of sticks. You wouldn't think there would be much of a difference here, but there's a massive difference here. <laughs> These sticks are very stylized, like I talked about before. Whoops. Focus. It's just completely different. They're just night and day different. The way they feel, the way they sound. And and really the difference though, the, 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 the way it sounds, this is just the way it sounds, which is only the only thing you can do. I need to separate that. Me, just listen to the sound, not the way it feels. Okay. okay, let's get more scientific here and, and mute the stick. Okay, honestly, not much of a difference, but in my experience, there's a drastic difference between these two sticks. It's, it's a totally different experience for me, the player. But if I had these sticks, those, those are two very different, those are two very similar sticks. Though, if I had these guys, now, now, now we can really get into a difference. And we'll show a difference here. You can hear it, it's obvious. So, there's an obvious volume difference. Which, you know, there we have it, it's a different sound. So, and even, let's see, where are those Vinnies? This one, these Vinnie call you to this. This feels good. It's very... Yeah, they're not too fast. These sticks are not too fast, which I don't, I... Fast sticks are fun, but, um... But this feels good, especially at a, you know, on a drum set, which is you know what Vinny does. So which these sticks are designed for, designed for him playing drums. These are his signature sticks. These are the sticks that he uses. How do I know that? <laughs> because these are the sticks from that he used in um, in our album. Um, Brian's album, Brian Eisenberg Jazz Orchestra, B E J O, Bejo. Look it up, Brian Eisenberg, Eisenberg, Jazz Orchestra. The two latest videos, I produced those, and, uh, and I am in those videos too. Um, Vinny was our drummer.
and he sat there and used these sticks <laughs> and then the day was done and his his roadie was um pack it up while while I was putting gear away too and we were chatting and uh I said here you want this I said yes I do I feel good I'd never known about these until until that day What do I mean fast stick, slow stick? I mean, this stick is really, is decently fast. Like it really goes up, bam, bam. And then I can slow the stick down by doing, using the butt end. These are a little, these are a little, these are like medium speed. Good, good drum set design. Cause you don't want your sticks to be too bouncy when you're on a drum set. You want to have more control over what you're doing. Like you want to be more in charge. You don't want your stick to take too much of the lead. Which these sticks just lead the way, man. I just I just sit back and, and ride its coattails. Ride their coattails. Like oh shit, where are we going? But but these sticks, like I'm more in charge. And, and I'm more in charge with these sticks too. These are about medium speed. These aren't the fastest I felt, but, um, but they're pretty, but they're pretty damn quick. Um, and when you're choosing a stick, you pull, when you want to buy a pair of sticks, you get all of you. After you've figured out which stick you want, you've played around with the, all of them, and you're like, ooh, I want these sticks. You pull all of them. You pull that whole thing off, and you pull, like, all 10 pairs or 20, or however many they got, just pull them all out. And then get on the floor, just get out of, someone, out of everyone's way, just off to the side somewhere. And where you have, ideally, a hard carpet. Cause you're going to go ding a ling ling. You're going to go, you're going to do this. You're going to, which is a really quick, easy way to, to just hear the stick. You could do this mute one stick, but let the other ring. Those are pretty well pitched, uh, pretty well matched in pitch. It's a little bit of difference in the, a little bit of pitch difference in the uh, higher frequency, but that fundamental. One's a little low. Oh, okay. Here's an example of a slow mallet. I mean, this thing. Look, this is this is a stupid. I mean, it's a beautiful woodblock mallet. Duck. It's perfect, but. Um, there's no bounce here, like, just the the versus the 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 the. you know, there's, na this is natural bounce here, this one, this one just completely dies, there's a little bit of a thing there, but this is a slow stick, this is a slow mallet, this is a slow percussionist tool. This is also a slow mallet, a slow stick mallet thing. Let me get rid of this. A little bit faster than the woodblock mallet, right? There's some bounce here. There's, that's probably why I like these sticks. And um, these mallets. So. This is what I mean by f f fast, 
fast sticks, slow sticks, fast mallets, slow mallets. You know, how quickly it comes back up after you've scientifically, you know, each one comes back up. Yeah. They're on like the higher side of, of middle, like mid, mid to high speed. Another pair of sticks I really like for drum set, especially for like big drum set, are the Danny Carey sticks. Those are nice. Those those have a like a molding on the hand, and your 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 fingers set in front of of a groove, so you you, you would never. <laughs> I mean, drummers don't drop their sticks, but you definitely would. A drummer is definitely not going to drop. Um, A Danny Carey stick, because you'll see. Hmm. What was I talking about before? What did I start off? How did I start off talking about the, this? Whatever. What were we first talking about? Uh, I was talking about contact sound too, the way it sounds. Yeah, I pretty much wrapped that up, I think. Yeah, but what was I talking about before that? That's That was the segue, that was the tangent that I... The first tangent of that entire strain of tangents was, was me talking about contact sound a little before that. I don't know. It's cool. We're just chilling, right? Oh yeah, slowing the stick down and then, okay, fast sticks, slow sticks. And so if you flip this around, then you get a slower stick. And the slower the mallet is, the more you have to work at it. The more you are doing the one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Like you are doing everything that the bead of the head, the, uh, everything that the, the head of the stick, the bead of the stick, everything that the bead does here action wise on a, on a non boingy surface, Everything that this does, I do. If this goes one, two, one, two, my hand is going one, two, one, two. If it's boingy, I'm only, do and then it becomes a two to one ratio, right? One to one ratio, I hit once, I, this happens once, I move once. It's one to one ratio. One two, one two. I would say this ha this action happens once because one action happened here, and then at a high enough speed, when I can justify a bounce, <laughs> world's slowest bounce. Truly letting that bounce. Back. And this doesn't this pad doesn't this pad sound awesome? I said I said X Zymox or something before. It's an X pad. It's a Promark X pad. Promark X pad. Metal plate. 
BBs. I had to put my extra duct tape there because I was losing BBs out, out, out of the side. This pad is from 2008. I'm sure they've advanced it from here. From this one. Evolved. Ah, I wasn't breathing on that. Here, all that wasn't clean before when I was doing it fast, so what do I do? Slow it down. Okay, now reapproach that, get back at that speed, relax, relax the face, don't fuzz anything. Need to be more, uh, and the higher the, the, this ratio, you know, perpendicularness, the, the least amount of bounce, like, right? I got a little bit of poo -poo, poo -poo, but the, the but the more perpendicular, the more parallel the stick gets with the head, the higher chance of bounce we have. So what I was noticing in this fucked up seat that I'm in, where I don't really have ideal angles and I, 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 in, I in ideal body position, because I'm an idiot, apparently. <laughs> Or maybe I'm just lazy and I just like sitting in here. There we go. Um, I noticed that this was a little high, which was a cause of, which I could feel uh, was a reason why I was fuzzing some of those laughs. So there's the max, right? You want to find out where it actually is and then just rise up a little bit from there and that's your that's your ultimate bounce position. There we go. See, I just improved that. The first time I tried that, so I'm like, shit. Second time I did it, wasn't too bad, right? So, it can still be better for those of you who, who know. For those of you who know, for you educated percussionists, you obviously see that I'm a orchestral percussionist just trying to do this. <laughs> it's basically what's happening. You, it, like, if you didn't hear me say any of those things that, I, you know, I was classically trained and orchestrally trained. If you didn't know that and you just saw me drumming all, all of a sudden for you higher up guys, you'd be like, oh, oh, he didn't march in a, in a top 12 drum corps. He didn't march in a top 12 drum line for DCI, Drum Corps International, DCI.org. Oh shit, what was I saying? See how fast it happens? Damn it, go back. I was talking about DCI.org. Why was I talking about that? DCI, oh, drum core, shoot. 
Gosh darn it. <sighs> Happens so quickly. I gotta be careful. I gotta be careful with that. I gotta I gotta be more cognizant of my of like departing on a tangent. Like that has to be more of a conscious thing. Right now I just kinda like blindly go into them and I don't even realize I'm in a tangent, which is a real danger. Cause then you never get back because you never knew you were lost. You never knew you had to get back, right? Like the way Louis C.K.'s wife apparently tells the story. <laughs> Anyway, I was doing that lick and uh, trying to get that back. And so you saw me, you saw what I did for myself to get it to what I w knew that it could be. I just wasn't warmed up enough. I wasn't like in the zone enough. And so I, da, 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 like I dialed myself in right there. You saw how I did it. This is what I'm doing. I'm trying to teach you how to think about this stuff. Teach you how to get better. Teach, teach you how to teach yourself, right? That's the ultimate goal of a teacher. You know, you've done your job and you're like complete with that student once that student can, one, teach it to other uh, younglings, uh, more uh, other rookies successfully and getting them to getting those rookies to then apply the knowledge and demonstrate according to the instruction. And they also, shit, I just got did another tangent, god damn it. Oh, and when they Clearly, I've gotten to the spot where they're teaching themselves what to do. Like, I don't need a lesson anymore. I mean, I <laughs> it would be fun. Sure, I'll, I'll do a lesson. But I already know where I suck, how I suck. I already know what to do to get better. I already know how to teach myself. I am teaching myself. I have been teaching myself for for you know, a couple decades now. So, I, this is what I'm teaching to you is, is like, I want to introduce you to a style of thinking, a, a, a procedure of thinking and therefore actions, and using logics, using logics, <laughs> using, the, using the logic of, of physics, right? You know, fast stick, slow stick, springiness, surfaces, the physicality, you know, of this world. We're doing something physical here. I'm a physical being, we're doing something physical. Therefore, what we're concentrating on is the physics of it, the physicalnesses of it. Physics, physicalnesses, same thing. Physicalness, physics. So introducing you to what's going on here, like, did you ever have the thought, I mean, for, for you younger students, did you ever even have the thought until just a bit ago that there was such a thing as slow sticks versus fast sticks? Probably not. But now you know, <laughs> right?
<laughs> this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to. I'm trying to just. Da I'm trying to just. I'm offering bits of data to be downloaded or to not be downloaded. You know, download these things. Don't download these things. I'm speaking to those who. And everything I'm saying is for the person who does want to download. I'm uploading this information and you can download it. And know that I'm not the best of the best, not even close. You can hear it if you're an advanced player. I don't have any natural talent. I've talked about this before. I don't have any natural talent at all. So everything I'm able to do now is because of crazy, a crazy amount of, of focused, mindful, attentive, you know, purposefulness towards this like I really focused on this and I did a lot of practicing you know need I say more in order to get to what I'm able to do because I wasn't the six-year-old kid who could just burr, burr, just fly like the wind and that person who has natural talent will then be a way worse teacher than someone who sucks so really what I'm doing here is I'm not like oh hey I'm showing off my Aren't I awesome? Aren't I a cool drummer? Aren't, aren't my drumming skills awesome? That's not what I'm doing here. I'm maybe a little bit, but <laughs> but what I'm I'm just drumming and practice. I'm just this is just me practicing right now. This is a practice session for me. You're watching a practice session. I'm just a dude with his sticks and a pad and a metronome practicing and I'm talking out loud. I'm a drummer who has no natural talent and only got to where he is because of the knowledge acquired. I acquired all the knowledge. Of course, inevitably there's always room for more, but anything percussion you want to talk about, I can get on a soapbox for hours about it. Anything percussion you want to talk about, I can be one of those people to talk to. I could be one of the many. There are lots and lots of great drummers out there who are better than me, and maybe who even had even even less of a natural talent than me by nature, by nature, hence natural. Who really thought and grinded their way into this ability, like I did. Inevitably. Drumming is cool. It's fun to do this. It's fun to play in perfect unison with another human being going 90, you know, 90 miles an hour. It, it's spiritual. So... I'm here talking about all of the elements involved, all the ingredients involved, all of the, I'm, I, I'm, I'm doing a practice session and I'm talking out loud and I, all the things that I would tell myself of what to do, 
teaching myself what to do, having taught myself what to do. I know what to do now. So now I'm just telling myself what to do, but I'm saying those things out loud as well for the video. Usually these things just exist in my head and they just stay there because it's just a, you know, it's just a private dialogue between me and my brain. But now I'm saying what my brain is saying. I'm verbalizing my thoughts. I'm verbalizing all of the th things that you got to think about if you're going to do this. Feel me? This is just really fun to do. And, and therefore, and hence my motivation. It's, this is even, not even playing with other human beings. Just, just this sticks and pad is fun. Just, just that is like a, it's like I'm playing with magic. It's awesome. And other people think it's awesome too. And that's awesome, right? You know? It's a, it's a gift to be shared with the, with the world and everyone loves a good beat. And so if you can provide that beat to people, people will love you and love your contribution, right? Love your contribution, therefore love you, right? You gotta get, you gotta, you got to present value if you're going to be valued, loved. What's your contribution? What are you bringing to the table? What's your gift to the world? This is really fun, and other people think it's fun too. You, and obviously, you think it's fun. You wouldn't be watching this. I got this hard bolt of light through the video. I don't like that. So, just, just, do, just doing it alone is fun. Doing it with other people is a thousand times more fun. And this is pretty damn fun. So that's, playing with other people, that's saying something. It's spiritual. There's really no other, that's just the most cut and dry way of, 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 verbalizing the actuality of, of what's going on. Musicians bond spiritually. Our spirits fuse. Our, 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 our souls, our spirits, the, the whatever this ineffable essence is, this thing, we, we syncopate and, and we fuse and we bond. The, the, the bonds that I have with the people who I've played with the most perfectly in unison together are the people who I will, who, whose funerals I will be attending. <sighs> that sucks. And I know many of them would attend mine. If you play together, it's like, it's like getting married in a way. It's just like, it's like having sex. It's just super bonding. To, to have achieved something divine together
That's part of why musicians do what they do, is for the sake of playing with other people. And also to, to create a sonic experience for an audience to love. So there's, so you could say that us playing music is our work so we can build our thing to give it to the people, but it doesn't feel like work at all. It's just, it's this like shared activity of soul connecting and people are gonna pay us to do it. At least back in the day before those assholes started putting music up on the internet. Copyable. As soon as they went to MP3 and turned it into binary that could be copied, that was the end of it. Technically, you could say the beginning of the end was the advent of the radio, you know, the phonogram, the Victrola. Because before that, the only way anyone ever heard any music at all, the gramophone was invented in 1888. Thomas Edison, it's up for debate. Apparently there's another guy. Before 1888, the only time any homo sapien walking the earth heard with their ears music tonal, harmonic, melodic music was because they were sharing the same airspace as an instrumentalist playing an acoustic instrument. And the reason why the guitar is shaped like that, the violin, the cello, the reason why they have those sound boxes is so that they amplify the sound and really cause it to get launched and just have all the, that, those compressions of atoms inside there and then they just get poof they just get pushed out like a geyser hence you be able to hear it from even farther away they covered up that hole if, if they're if we're in a stadium with no wind totally scientifically controlled environment and we were inside of a, a stadium, like we're at the, the Cardinal Stadium in Phoenix, a dome that closes. We could stand in one end of the zone and then take a guitar player and have his guitar tuned up nice and, per nice and pretty. And then we would be able to hear, especially if there's no one in the audience, it's just totally empty space, cathedral-like. We would totally we would totally hear faintly that guitar. If that guitar plugged up that hole, we're gonna hear it. we're not gonna hear anything. Like really plugged up that hole to where there's no resonance happening in the side of that chamber. people had to be in earshot of some bloke playing a fiddle. If you were hearing a violin, it's because there was a dude over there playing it. Very rare for women to be playing instruments back in those days. Aside from, you know, piano at home. And maybe some violin. You know, relatively speaking to the amount of men. I 
I'm sure Sousa's band, Sousa's marching band, back in the 1800s had zero women. I can, I bet my life on it. Whereas now the president's own band, like the premier Marine Corps marching band, Look that up. <laughs> United States Marine Corps band. You'll know you found the the video if there's a red curtain and it pulls away and it's just a graphic, so it looks kind of weird. And then you see a nice a nice gentleman wearing a exquisite uniform and directs, conducts the band. Washington Post, Stars and Stripes Forever. If you heard someone, if you heard music, it's because there was an instrumentalist playing something. Ba -ba -da -ba. something you know a harp a lyre you know, just anything a real acoustic instrument with a real human pulsing beating heart with real hands that work playing an instrument before 1888 that was it think about that now the year 2002 and beyond for the people in the future. Think about that. The beginning of the end of musicians, really, like the prolificness of musicians and the, the, the demand to play, the desire to play, the, 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 the demand for players, meaning like paid musicians, all of that just went, it's just started nose diving as soon as Edison invented, as soon as that, as soon as the, the, the phonogram in 1888 was invented, by whom, who knows? Maybe history will never tell. There is a debate, though. I think it's, the, I think it is the case that Edison, like, just took the idea and actually, like, made it better and manufactured it. You know, he actually did something about it, instead of that other guy who didn't do shit. But then it took another, like, ad the advent of recorded music. And then, like, it's going this way, but then it spikes doosh, in, the, you know, in the year 1990-something when fucking, who are those piece of shit dudes? Napster? Fuck those guys who started proliferating the copies of music. So now everyone was just able to steal all the music and the musicians stopped getting paid and now the quality of music is as shitty as it is because we apparently don't value it. Oh, I like, I like music. No, no, no. Who doesn't? Value it. Meaning giving those musicians money so they can make it. If you want good music in the world, nothing's free in the world. If you want good music, then you gotta pay those musicians. Not steal. Hello. You get what you, you get what you don't pay for. I'm not saying that you've stolen music.
oh, but now people pay like fucking five bucks a month for the for the world's for the entire world's collection of music, five bucks a month. On Spotify. The average person who's got a track up there th there's a pie that's split the people who make the most amount of the revenue generated from Spotify go to the highest people there you know Justin Bieber is getting a huge chunk of that pie Katy Perry huge chunk of that pie Taylor Swift huge chunk of that pie and then but then the fewer plays you have the less and less of that money you get makes sense You would hope, right, that you play a tune for just from some average band, you play a tune that you really like and that you really love and, you know, you like their music and you want to hear more of it in the future. And like, oh yeah, I'm paying for Spotify, so therefore those musicians, those musicians are getting paid. The reason why this MeowFaceMusic.com isn't in, uh, read this, the reason why um, CD's not in there, but those are the track names. They're all internet cats, except for the first one. That was my cat. Mewser. If the reason why I, I don't even bother to put this up on streaming services is because is because I would be average. A guy did the math. How much money do you think I would get per play? Like if if I if I for some reason actually uploaded this to a streaming service and you're hearing it on any given streaming service, not just Spotify, just the average. This guy did an average. It's quite the quite the math problem. Quite the study. And if you, if you played one of my tracks, one of my 10 tracks on here, and say you li uh, listen to it on Spotify, and you listen to that, you listen to the whole thing, all the way through, and it didn't stop, like boom, boom, you consumed that song, that tune. How much money do you think I get from your one play? For an average bloke, not a mega superstar. A dollar? Nope. A penny? Nope. Okay, buckle up. Ching. <sighs> One thirty-three thousandths of a penny. So my track would have to be played 33,000 times for me to earn one penny. And it's a big joke all over YouTube of people getting like, oh, their Spotify check. Like they made royalties and they, they made money off because they were streaming it and people were playing it and liking it and got played thousands and thousands and thousands, tens of hundreds of thousands of times. The video is of these musicians who probably spent tens of thousands of dollars just making the album get a check for like seven cents.
or three cents, right? So that would be 999 or 33. 33, oh, 99,000 times. If my tune got played 99,000 times, 100,000 100, times, 100,000 times, one-tenth of a million times, I'm getting a paycheck for three cents. I'm not even upset by it. It's just, it's just like a non-option. Like, but what about exposure? <laughs> but then, but then it, it could become popular, and then you could rise to the ranks. I'm not an act. I don't have tits and ass. I, I'm not you know, this like sex thing on a, on a stage who can carry a tune, who's singing songs with a band full of a bunch of other really good looking people. That's not, that's what becomes popular is the act, is the person. How beautiful are they? Avril Lavigne, which is, would have been another, just another nothing decent, somewhat decent vocalist amongst the millions and millions and, and amongst the droves of, of people who can definitely carry a tune in this world. If she wasn't dropped yet gorgeous, then there would be no Avril Lavigne in our reality now. So... I'm not an act on stage. I'm, it's all electronic music. There's no lyrics, there's no meowing. There's no, it's just instrumental. It's an instrumental album. And in the visual media that I have connected to this, I'm not shaking my ass, so. That's what The people who are making that kind of music and who have an act like that, yeah, it might be worth it to them to put their stuff up on to the streaming for exposure so that more and more people will grab onto it and then their paycheck gets higher and then they shoot through the roof and they become super famous. Well, I predict in the year... 3,000, there will only be five musicians since the advent of the radio, since the advent of the record player, it's been going down, that number of musicians, the number of humans on the planet who pick up an instrument and learn it and get good at it has been declining. And I think in the year 3000, it'll decline and decline and decline so much, it'll get down to five. And the only thing you'll have to listen to for at least new music is one of five shitty bands where each um, front man, front woman in on stage singing is dropped a gorgeous. That's what I predict. And it'll all sound the same. That's what I predict. Let me know if you can. Hey, people in the year 3000. Is anyone even there? 
Hello? You're 3,000? You're 3,000? Is anyone there? Hello? Do we kill ourselves off? Do the meteor, do the, heat, the earth heat up too much? Do we put too much carbon dioxide in the air because of all our trash? Like, we all starve? Do we all kill each other because we thought socialism was a good idea? Yeah, these aren't really drumming videos. These are just a guy in his truck talking videos who happens to sometimes hit a drum pad. Let's be mindful. Sorry, I don't have enough for everyone, so. I would, but I'd have to give one to everyone, right? And there's not enough, so. All or nothing. Left hand lead. See how my wrist isn't moving at all? I mean, it's getting jiggled around but here see how it's not pivoting it's just a, it's just a fingers thing I'm just lifting with the fingers I'm lifting the the, the back of the stick so in slow motion it's just Opening and closing. That's it. So it's just dribbling versus this, which is purely mechanical, like 
This is dribbling. And like a, uh, like a bouncy, like a basketball, I'm dribbling that. This in dribbling basketball terms would just be taking the ball and mechanically putting it on the ground, touching it to the ground and then lifting it back up and touching it to the ground and lifting it back up, like hanging onto the, the, the ball the whole time, hanging onto the stick the whole time with like a, a, like a crushed closed hand. It's not going anywhere. The, my fingers aren't opening at all. This is a closed action. But now the hand is open. Now the fingers are doing this. So you have this, do, 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 do. And then you have this, do, 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 do. So. Fingers versus wrist. Fingers, wrist only. And now locking the fingers and the wrist. Now just elbow. Yeah. Er, 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 er. Now locking the fingers, locking the wrist, locking the elbow. Now just shoulder. <laughs> That's the spectrum. Four different mechanical elements to be thinking about to integrate it into each other. Those are, those are compartmentalized skills. Oh, buzz. And a little trick for fuzzing left hand is to just take the ring finger and just jet it out a little bit. That was a lot, but like if you're, if you're crushing diddles, then really get that under support to, so that it's not, so that there's something in the way of it going down. So it's a much, it's a much more one, two thing like if my finger is stretched all the way to here, then it's, they can only be a one, two thing. So if that's what's happening, the, the, the more, the more the length of the stick, either in the left hand going up the stick or in the right hand going down the stick, either way, just a length of the stick needs to be controlled, be it on the front side of it or the back side of it, doesn't matter. That's why I can do this symmetrically. Each, the fulcrum is being held in the same spot. So, right, same length of the stick. Bottoms are lined up, same spot on the stick. That's, that's what's going on. So I'm here today and these days offering those little tips and tricks to get better at doing this because I've gotten better at doing this since I was nine. So I'm letting you in on the thinking along that journey. You understand. I'm looking at green. Hmm. The color I didn't get to see too much living in Phoenix.
The fulcrum is where I hang on to the stick. Everything else is for the sake of control. Be it this way or same spot this way. I, I can control, there, there's a bounce happening here. So in order for that bounce to stop, I need to get more, more length of this stick with a hand on it. Oh, I'm squeezing so hard, I'm trying. Right? So therefore, the more hand you have on the stick, the more control you have. Because you don't want this thing to just be a boingy, boingy, thing all the time you can't you have to hang on to it sometimes to get it to get in the position that you need it to go into so be it you know this is where we hang on to the stick this is where we control the stick this is where we hang on to the stick this is how we control the stick And the, the, the more we, the more length of the stick we get, like if I had like double the length, if my fingers were twice as long or something, and I could just like really raw stretch that out really far down the stick, then that's even more control. So since I was losing control, I was, you know, fuzzing out my diddle there. I went like this down the stick, just a little bit to add just that little bit more control. And it worked beautifully. What I was singing there wasn't just chaos, I was, you know what that was? That's right. Circle of fourths, baby. Stacked fourths, arpeggiated fourths. You see, you see the pattern. An interval of a fourth. One, two, three, four, one, four, like those two end notes, the first and the fourth together, that's a fourth. Stacked fifths would sound like boom, 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 boom. One, two, three, four, five, one, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, five, boom, 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 ba. Five, four, three, two, one, boom, ba, ba, boom, boom. Little touch of music theory for you. Don't not go there. Meowfacemusic.com. What? 
Meow, M-E-O-W. I love the people who, when on the phone, over the phone, like maybe I don't even know this person, I say meow face, they get it the first time. They know exactly what I mean. It's a drag. Having to explain it or spell it. I like my birds of a feather, those of us who just know. Those of us who are quirky enough ourselves to know that there must be other quirky people in the world quirky enough to come up with things like meow face. So therefore, when you hear it, your brain registers it. as opposed to having no concept of weird, strange, esoteric, stylized people who would come up with something like that. So therefore your brain wouldn't even be able to process like that, that weirdness, it would just be over your head. Not just like over your head, but just, you know, there's no square peg inside of your face for the square thing to go through. You're just a different kind of human. I, on the other hand, and most of us watching here, we're those other kind of human beings. definitely a cross to bear, but I'd still do this life over again. I'd, I'd choose this life knowing it would be frustrating. that it would come with a, a built-in sense of solitude, aloneness, rogueness. Meaning not connected. I've always had a hard time so it seems to be the case that when I was a kid and even now I have a hard time connecting with some people. So really, you know, I could just change that whole script right now. I could just say that I'm this way and they're that way and they're just not going to get it. But what I am saying overall is like, to be an artistic type is a bit of a curse because we're always broke. <laughs> you know, what, what we're compelled to do and what we're skilled in doing doesn't have any more value, relatively speaking. Before digital. relatively speaking, to before digital. <sighs> Feel me? Enjoy spending this time with you. 
how interesting. <laughs> trip, isn't it? This life is a trip. Very interesting. That's that, it's not an ultra specific word, but I think the word and that the specific meaning of the word interesting really is kind of the, the, the best word for me to choose. My perspective of the world, my reality, you know, I perceive this reality as being interesting it's interesting to study it's interesting to look at it's interesting to to interact with to be in to be a part of It's like it's an interactive video game. <laughs> Did you guys see that movie? Ready Player One? <laughs> yeah. Check that out. Ready Player One. Well, you gotta watch Matrix first. The Matrix. If you haven't seen that one, do that for yourself, even for its own sake, not as a prerequisite to any other films, but... In 1999, when I was 19 years old, and I saw that for the first time, It was just like this whole other level of experience, of, like a film experience that I'd never had before. It was like similar, similar to, or maybe less than, probably less than, like the shock that went into audiences' eyeballs and ears when you know, bah, 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 bah. you know, when Star Wars came on in like 1977, like that first film in the opening sequence, boom! Like that was, it was revolutionary. Nothing had ever been like that before. This is why Star Wars is such a, a thing in our culture, because it was a pivot. It was a step up, a big step up. And then another big step that came along was the Matrix. It was the first time audiences had ever seen at least in the context of a of a of a normal Hollywood film like we watched Keanu Reeves jump and then we had a freeze frame of him in air. Like, all right, he's just stopped now. But then from our perspective, then we see all 360 of him. Like he's frozen in air. And now all of a sudden, like we're on his, we're on his left and now we're on his right. Like we see that. And the way they'd accomplished that was they put him up on a green screen, you know, in a green screen studio in the round. And then there were cameras 
I think there were 360, 360 degrees, makes sense, 360 cameras, still cameras, chink, capturing stills. They put that in a big circle. You know, poking through a green screen material. And so they had the actor jump in that situation, then they went, Frack! then they had all the cameras just go off rapid speed right next to each other. So, and not all at the same time, because we still want to see motion going up and down this way. So we're, we, he wasn't totally frozen, and then we just, he, he was like doing this, but like, boom, like, boom, like he's still, there's still momentum there. Like Marianne Carr's character, Trinity, she jumps and then we see see her, but there's still motion there. So the way they capture that is the 360 cameras, they go, one, two, three, four, rock, and they rapid fire in that motion. So when you put those frames together, each of those pictures, you know, one to two to three to four, line them up, then you see this really cool image of Trinity jumping but then we like circle her. Something that a camera could do, like, you know, just a roll, you know, lights, camera, action, just the regular video, video camera, the film camera, whatever the heck it's called. The camera could be mounted onto a thing and then be like pivoted and like, moved really fast, but like robot programmed fast, like but in 1999, they just they're operating on a budget. It's a film. You know, they don't they, you don't get a you don't get to spend millions upon millions of dollars on a machine that would move the camera that quickly and that safely and that smoothly. So they just did it, they just did it another way. And it's breathtaking. It was breathtaking. Maybe you've seen something like that now, but when we saw that, when humans saw that for the first time in 1999, it was just like, oh, oh, whoa, oh. Like it really took our breath away. It was just shocking. Like, whoa, it just, you know, it, it looked like magic. Just like the way when I first saw a, a, a laser cutter, bzz, 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 like doing that, like, oh God, it doesn't even look real. It looks like, looks like magic. It doesn't even look like it's a part of my reality. So in the Matrix, they're doing scenes that just looked like they're defying reality. It's, it was a trip. And then watch Ready Player One. Two very different films, but you'll understand why I'm coupling them together. And not because of the cinematography, but the premise, the premise of, of Matrix and the premise of Ready Player One, you'll understand. All right, toodaloo. Starting to get ants in my pants. I need to get a little bit more work done. Because right now I'm just. I got work to do, let's put it that way. <laughs> okay. <sighs> but I just want to talk. I don't want to go organize the garage. I'd rather sit here with you. Well. Gotta face the music, as they say, you know. I can't just do what I want all the time. Sometimes there's a thing called work. Which we can define as things that you don't want to do, but they still gotta get done. 
So you just do them. So. To work. All right. Toodaloo. Bye-bye.